Welcome, everybody. Here we are gathered for a session for GWCN, the Global Walkability Correspondence Network. We have network members gathered from all over the planet here for this session featuring network member Carrie Tyson, who is the Executive Director of Portland, Maine Downtown. His session is entitled Turning Your Downtown Stars into a Constellation. Carrie Tyson serves as the Executive Director of Portland Downtown, a 501c4 organization that works to stimulate a thriving, vibrant, and sustainable downtown community. Prior to moving to Maine, he worked across Arkansas in the fields of downtown revitalization and historic preservation, and in Seattle, focusing on microenterprise. Before his time at Portland downtown, he worked for 2.5 years at the Kennebec Valley Council of Governments, serving as the Director of Community and Economic Development. And without further ado, I shall turn it over to you, Carrie. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. I'm so glad to be here today. I'm, I'm uh, always I'm thrilled to be part of this network. I'm so grateful to have found it and uh, uh, online and following it. Uh, with uh, through Instagram and other places, LinkedIn, and uh, it it came across uh, my uh, attention when we're doing a lot of work in public restrooms here in, in downtown Portland, which I'll eventually talk about, uh, and that was sort of what my gateway into this conversation. But I've, I've been fortunate enough to join a lot of you uh, and given your talks, and I'm happy to be getting a chance to share the good things that are happening here in Portland, Maine. Uh, I have no illusions that I uh, that um, I, I'm smarter than anyone. I suspect everyone here is smarter than me and have done uh, similar, probably even better things. But I do think a lot of great things are happening here in Portland, and I, I'm happy to share them. Hopefully, uh, either those of you who are here today or who later watch the recording can learn something from what we're doing and and. You know, what we used to say uh, in the Main Street world is don't strain your eyes, plagiarize. Uh, so feel free if there's anything that's good that we're doing to take it and run with it and make it your own in your community and adjust it to whatever fits there. Uh, so briefly, I'm going to talk, talk a little bit about uh, uh, my background, not too much because uh, it's not overly interesting, but this is my dear and lovely wife, Sarah. Uh, we have somewhat interesting story in the sense that uh, she's a native Mainer. I was born and raised in Little Rock, Arkansas, quite a long ways away from here in Maine. Uh, for those of you from across the world, it's the, the middle of the United States, pretty much, and what you might be familiar with uh, through, you know, former President Bill Clinton, who, who robs from there. That's my bad Bill Clinton impression. So that we, we all have one as native Arkies. Uh, so, but Sarah and I both served as Main Street State Coordinators. Uh, she was in Washington State and I was in Arkansas, and years later uh, I moved there and then I, we moved here. Uh, and so we've got this similar kind of professional background. Um, so let me talk a little bit about uh, more fun stuff about here in Portland and Portland downtown. This is uh, uh, here in downtown Portland. We're a uh, downtown improvement district. Uh, um, a lot of my colleagues across the country have, refer to it as a business improvement district or some similar kind of things in other parts of the world. We're focused on a, uh, a little under two mile geography uh, that we're funded by a property tax uh, in that ge very specific geography and provide services in that geography. But we strive to be a strong community partner and recognize that um, so those those boundaries are, are sort of quasi imaginary uh, that nobody else that you know if you don't live here you don't work here you probably don't know what they are but you can tell from some things we do you know sort of sort of the the geography of our work we are about thirty one years old uh, so we've been doing this for for more than a minute and I've been with the organization a little over three years. But as Annika said earlier, I, I spent uh, a, a good part of my life, 14 plus years, working in the world of downtown revitalization and the like. So uh, it is my background, uh, and I'm, I was thrilled to join the organization when the opportunity ar arose. Um, and so thinking about this galaxy and this sort of metaphor, uh, this is a version of a presentation I did with a, a friend and colleague of mine, C.J. Opperthauser, who runs uh, Friends of Congress Square Park. 
here in downtown Portland, a really great location uh, that if you get to Portland, let me know. I'll give you a tour. Uh, and one of the good starting places is Congress Square Park. But this is sort of our galaxy, an overview of downtown Portland. And I put um, uh, some marks there in a number of our parks that, that went on this screenshot. We have 10 downtown parks uh, in Portland. And part of what we think about in terms of walkability and placemaking is connecting those spots, uh, making that walk. Those, those are our stars. And so we turn that into our constellation to try to activate those spaces in various forms and fashions. But you can sort of see how that's a little bit of the spine of the city there. That orange line is Congress Street, which is one of our probably three main thoroughfares here. Uh, and our, our parks sort of align uh, a little bit in, in those areas. Um, next slide here. So how do, how do we do this and how do we draw the path? Well, well, these are the sort of the top end of, of that in that upper left-hand corner there is Longfellow Square, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, born uh, in Portland, uh, Maine, and uh, did a lot of writing here and his house still remains and it's on Congress streets, not too far from Congress Square Park. And then we align those with various things that are happening down that sort of strip, the middle, uh, slide there is our Congress Street, and that's uh, one of our our great benefactors uh, uh, or, or institutions, the Maine College of Art and Design, which is a, a, an important staple here. It brings in an interesting student population, their parents, uh, a lot of creativity. And then taking that further down is uh, with a holiday tree there is Monument Square, which is one of our uh, great uh, plazas. Uh, that we have that we've been doing a lot of activation work in. Uh, but to start uh, uh, with that and, and, and sort of in that upper part of the constellation, tell you the little bit of the story of Congress Square Park, which is this uh, space that you can see uh, there, which is soon to get a multi-million dollar upgrade. It's uh, uh, owing in no small part to the good work of the Friends of Congress Square who saved this spot about 11 or 12 years ago uh, when it was just an empty space, then it wasn't being uh, well managed or well taken care of, and certainly not programmed the way it is now. It was one of our, if not our most active space in downtown. And so, you know, it was a highlight of the Project for Public Spaces. You can read the case study on their website, uh, and it's truly one of those great uh, models across the country. Uh, so they've taken it over and really just done great things with some simple stuff that, that you know, we sort of all in this world know, which is tables, movable tables, umbrellas to keep the sun or rain off, greenery, bright colors, uh, benches, you know, that sort of thing. And there's always events, uh, whether they're movies or music or a market or all sorts of fun things. They just do a tremendous job. So that's sort of our, our, our one of our key stars here and one of the top ones in that Congress Street constellation or spine. And this is just some other examples of things they do there in Congress Street. This is sort of a little circus, uh, Congress Square Park, I should say. It's a little bit of a circus activity they had not too long ago. You can see that space, you know, like so many great public plazas, has that uh, sort of lower level, that kind of bowl shape that sort of creates a great space for, uh, for programming and activation. People love to sit on the stairs. It has that, you know, walk in, you feel a little encumbered. It's, it's really just, just tremendous. And they do a lot of good uh, programming there, including some, some fairly simple stuff. So this is what they call Blurb Club, but it's just a book club. Uh, and it meets monthly, and it's just a, you know, it's a partnership with the library, and it, it, again, it's one of those things we do to activate spaces for people to walk through and engage with, and that's part of our key to that walkability, we, play, we believe, uh, collectively here at Portland Downtown and with our partners. It's all about space loveability, you know, what's the loveability factor? Uh, because if it's boring, you know, it, while there may be great sidewalks or whatever, and that's certainly important, uh, you know, it's not it's necessarily about, it doesn't necessarily engage a, an individual. Uh, so so we, we believe those are key factors. Just another really fun and interesting piece uh, they did uh, at Condor Square Park where this is just shadow puppets, real simple stuff, light box, uh, kids are super engaged. And again, it's about all ages. 
And I'd point out, and I'm going to talk about this more here uh, in a bit, uh, these incredible lights we have. Uh, that's, you know, it gets really dark here on the East Coast in the holidays uh, during the winter. Uh, and so one of the things we collectively do, or we'll work with a local artist uh, to do a lot of uh, lighting throughout downtown, brightening the space, colorful, interesting, creative, uh, and it's a local artist who, who's in, engaged with that. Uh, because it does get dark at like 3.45 in the afternoon, you know, when, uh, when it's at, at its uh, worst. Uh, so here in um, Portland downtown, uh, you know, we're, we're a part of that as well. That's part of our effort. We've really ramped up our space activation and placemaking efforts in the last couple of years. Uh, and we do that through those lights. They're called Pandora's lights, uh, as the ones I just showed you. I've got some more slides here in a minute. That's the name of our uh, wonderful artist, Pandora Case. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of work in activating crosswalks. Again, it's about that lovability factor. A lot of great uh, plantings, color, space activation. We're trying to draw a line with some of those. This sort of highlights the walking path. Uh, we've got some creative bus stations and some creative traffic boxes. Uh, again, I'm going to show examples of these, but it's all about those little things that make that walking much more interesting. Uh, so this is a, a public plaza we've taken. It's actually a street that's been closed to cars, an open street uh, that we took over um, uh, last year, and we we're, we're doing it again this year. In fact, I spent my morning sweating out there moving things around. It's a little different this year because we were uh, successful in, in activating the space. We've seen more outdoor dining at the adjacent restaurants. But I will say that probably the best $12 I spent last year were these flags you see there. Just getting that height and that verticality that draws people eye, eyes up and with those uh, really bright colors did so much. Uh, we went to a recent conference around here about real estate development and we were just blown away by the number of folks who had their backgrounds as some version of a picture similar to this that had these this glorious architecture, these incredible cobblestone streets, and these just really uh, cheap but but great uh, uh, flags that we we tied with zip ties. Again, that's twelve bucks I, I spent all last year. We've actually done a little bit better job. I think this year we've added some pride flags and some flags of the world and 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 some of these. So we even sort of took it to the next level. Uh, but again, uh, we take little things and turn them into fun things here because it's, you know, we're trying to activate the space uh, and we're trying to encourage people to walk around and, and engage with our local business community. One of the ways is uh, the Valentine's Bandit, which originated here in Portland, Maine, uh, about oh, well over 20 years ago at this point. Uh, the individual who is responsible for that, it's been anonymous for for decades now, but he tragically passed away just a couple of months ago. And in his obituary, uh, his family um, wrote the tribute to him, to his uh, long uh, uh, unheralded work. But now the community has truly embraced him. You'll see t-shirts with this symbol, the heart. It's They're literally just a heart printed on a piece of paper. And the, those four corners of, of masking tape are an important part of the symbol around here. Everybody knows what they are. Uh, we've got pins that, uh, that you can buy, T-shirts, stickers, all sorts of, of fun things. Uh, and it's truly one of my favorite things that happens here in Portland. You go to bed on the night of the 13th, you come to work on the morning of the 14th of February, and these are just plastered everywhere around the community. So one of the things we did is one of our summer picnic tables is sort of a tribute to, to, to that. You know, again, those simple things, Nothing anybody here probably hadn't thought of before, but putting some games out in those spaces, trying to, you know, encourage people to walk down and take advantage of the space. Uh, and, you know, the second best, this is probably $30 we spent last year for these lights you see here in this alley. Again, a very simple thing we did, just talk to the property owners there. And we were like, this alley is really fun and cool. The, general, the young man right there is standing on a place that says, activate your superpowers here. It's just spray painted stencil and people do this sort of thing all the time. It's that planned whimsy, which we often think about that we can't really plan, but in fact, with little things like this, you can. 
this and this this uh, these thirty bucks we spent on these lights, thirty dollars or so, uh, really took a, an unsafe uh, or a perception of unsafe space and made it into sort of an Instagrammable space. So it's truly a one eighty we've done with you know thirty forty dollars here. Uh, so simple stuff. There's some great murals that are happening there. That's a long fellow poem. Uh, some of this is graffiti and some of it is sort of planned art. So it's kind of a combination of both. Again, our theory re reinforcing that is, you know, trying to make that space that's somewhat walkable from the infrastructure, more walkable from sort of the lovability perspective. Uh, and, you know, we, we this is another one of our alleyway projects we did here. Uh, Whoops, wrong slide. This is a, an alleyway that's not too far from our old office. We just moved about three months ago. That really uh, was um, had become sort of a haven for some challenges. Uh, but that's Jack, who's the son of one of our staff members. So we engaged him as well in this. Uh, you know, no child labor laws were broken. Uh, but this is next to the Equality Community Center here which is a space for LGBTQ uh, plus uh, folks uh, that, that is a real strong community partner. And so we thought, let's take that space and do sort of a, a, a double impact here and turn it into something that both enhances the space as well as uh, sort of uh, is in line with our the mission of our friends at the ECC. So that's taken that alley and, and we, we painted a pride, uh, progress pride flag there. You'll note that it, whoops, that's one too far. In the far right hand corner, there's sort of a gap that actually is spot with uh, no asphalt and it's just dirt. So we couldn't paint it, but we did the best we could with what we had. We also built that, uh, had it built, I should say, uh, this hides sort of the trash cans and stuff and there's really taken a, a, an unloved space and made it more sightly. That logo that was painted on there is one of the Mechanics Hall, uh, which is our another nonprofit partner, which is in the other side of the building. It's the seventh oldest lend lending library in the United States. So sort of a triple whammy. And then, of course, we added the, the some lights. You won't see them in these photographs uh, to kind of help with both uh, beautification and safety issues. Again, taking those spaces that once were um, a little bit unkind and turning in some a lovable space that helps people not avoid that, particularly at night when it had that perception of safety. Again, uh, you know, these holiday lights we do here, that's part of that path that I talked about on the spine. And these are all done during those winter months that do highlight all of these areas. So the, those, those lights go into those parks I mentioned to you and showed in that first uh, slide there on that path. And that's a, just another thing we do to sort of help with uh, that walkability side of things here in Portland. But also for us, it's reminding people and activating space. This is, uh, you know, I know we've got a lot of folks from around the world here uh, and football or soccer, as we call it here in the U.S., is uh, uh, really gaining in popularity. Uh, and so one of the things we did is showed the World Cup in November uh, in, in a, one of our big public plazas uh, and, and had a heck of a turnout. It got even bigger than this, but this is just a, a good shot. So again, it's bringing those folks into those public spaces that are often forgotten and through some of our uh, series of events. Again, another good shot of it. This was uh, during the holiday season, as you can see. One of the things we do here to promote that, we do have a uh, webcam that uh, is our holiday tree cam that folks from around the world can watch downtown Portland uh, in Monument Square. And it'll go live uh, usually the day after Thanksgiving, which is you know about third week of November here in the US. Uh, and it's another one of those things we do to promote our public spaces. And you can just watch it all day long, stream it on YouTube. That's how it goes. And people do this. And we get notes from all around the world and how much they enjoy watching this lovely New England winter and just seeing people, you know, go through our public spaces all the time. Uh, again, a pretty inexpensive piece we did that uh, it does have a walkability component, believe it or not, because it also can track like the snack downs because you can watch, you know, where the snow gets plowed and where people drive and walk. Uh, and, and you can see the path that people walk on. Uh, through the public plaza uh, and track that through 
through that uh, uh, tree cam. So it has, uh, even that cam has its walkability aspects. Uh, and again, we try to take advantage of our, our, our history here. Uh, Portland, Maine is where uh, the legendary author Stephen King was born. He was born here uh, at, at the hospital uh, that's right out, it's really in downtown, it's outside of the improvement district. Uh, so this is some, some uh, uh, Halloween related activities. And one of the things we did uh, this, this Halloween was just go around and uh, we, I think we spent 20 bucks or something. These red balloons, sort of that Pennywise thing, if you're a king aficionado like I am, and we just tied them onto the grates uh, that we had all throughout the downtown and did a lot of Instagram stuff. And it was a pretty viral thing we did. Again, people walked all around downtown to see these sort of, you know, temporary activations. I will say we we're mindful of the kind of balloons that, uh, you know, are biodegradable and that sort of thing. So we all try to think about these things holistic, but it was a thing we saw walkability uh, sort of activated from because people just wanted to see them and they wanted to take photos. So it was a lot of fun. Um, and, and our big philosophy to that end, or at least my philosophy, is I think it's important to turn details into delights. That's really my approach. I often refer to it as money ball for downtown management or downtown revitalization. I'm less interested about the home runs and the grand slams than I am the on base percentage and that sort of uh, base hit. Uh, these are just some traffic boxes uh, that a local artist have painted. I know that happens all across the world uh, and it's just our version, but we do approach this stuff through a walkability piece. It does. Uh, sort of enhance the space and make people more curious uh, and, and walk around to check them out. Uh, and this is just some public art that, you know, I've got some yarn bombing activity and that's one of those things that gets people out and reminds them that uh, it's an interesting place to walk here in downtown Portland. And again, I know these are simple things, uh, but it's that money ball, it's that on-base percentage. Uh, you know, we did some crosswalk painting uh, that that's, uh, really makes people, you know, we got so many compliments about it and it's an inclusive thing and it just makes uh, our spaces brighter and, and more, more lovable. And finally, well, not, not quite finally, but, but another version of that detail into the lights is to some of our bus stops. Credit goes to our partners at uh, Creative Portland here. Uh, they got some funding for this through Our Town, which is a National Endowment for the Arts funding and a variety of other resources. Uh, but they've really just taken standard bus shelters and turned them into piece of, pieces of art. Really tremendous uh, stuff. And a lot of uh, our local artists have been engaged in this, a lot of our immigrant community. And the one on uh, my right here that's sort of that uh, screenshot from Streets Blog, uh, last year was crowned the best bus stop in the United States. Uh, so, you know, that's a campaign that we kind of help lead here at Portland Downtown. I'm the one that nominated uh, that, that bus stop through Streets Blog because I love Streets Blog. I'm a giant Streets Blog nerd. Uh, and so I just thought, well, this is a great thing for, for, for Portland. And, you know, we were, we'd never really expected it to win, but it did. And that's, it certainly deserves it. It's really tremendous stuff. Uh, so again, that detail to delight. And another version of that, again, uh, approaching this through a walkability space is uh, we've uh, commissioned some local artists, paint about a dozen um, Adirondack chairs that we place throughout uh, town. One of the things, I had a really powerful conversation with someone a few months ago, right before we launched this, uh, their wife uh, had given birth not terribly long before that, and they were out for a walk. Uh, with the baby in the stroller on one of our main streets. And they told me, they said, we could not find a place to sit down uh, for my wife to breastfeed our child. They had to go, you know, a few blocks, well, more than a few blocks, out of this main drag area, which is Commercial Street here. I was like, okay, we, I, wow, that was a thing we can't let be the case. So, you know, we've taken over a space down there that's turned into a pop-up park. We've put a lot of these 
shares, just to give you a few examples of them. Again, we paid the local artists for these. We've considered auctioning them off with the money to go to a good cause at the end of the year. But at this point, honestly, they've taken such a beating. I'm not sure who's want, who would want them, but we may still do that. And, and we provided some seating for, um, you know, not just uh, mothers and, you know, who need to feed their child, but just folks who need to take a load off for a few minutes. You know, uh, a lot of folks, you know, if they walk with, with uh, mobility challenges, they may need to take a rest. So we've been very conscientious about how we try to provide seating. And one of the things we're working on here is a seating map just for uh, for the downtown and maybe for the community at large so that, we, you know, folks can kind of plan their way without it. Uh, and again, you know, details to the lights. Uh, we, we've done a lot of mural work here that's tried to make things brighter and more lovable and, and, and help with people uh, engaging with spaces. We also even try to take like some of the kind of signage we do and not make it that kind of boring, uh, you know, sort of harsh kind of stuff that's happening and make it a little more creative uh, and colorful and, and, and uh, dare I say, friendly. So uh, you know, again, detail into a delight. Uh, and part of our, our work here is to engage with residents. We have a lot of folks that live downtown. Uh, so we want to see how they want things to happen. So we have residential fairs. I speak to uh, uh, HOAs and that sort of thing. Just did one last week. Uh, so this is just an example of some of that outreach. Uh, and again, about that walkability piece, uh, is, you know, it's, uh, oftentimes folks, uh, you know, are walking their dogs a lot. So we really lean into that here. We've got some tremendous pet stores in downtown. It's a very dog-friendly city. So we launched, launched PortlandLovesPets.com to highlight our pet-friendly businesses downtown. We also provided like some water bowls for the pooches. A lot of those kind of already existed. Our, our community is so pet friendly, but we wanted all that collected in sort of an area, uh, a website. Now there are a few sort of national ones out there, but we wanted the local one. We also wanted to share the good word about, about how we are very much a pet friendly community. Because again, that gets folks out walking, exercising, moving about, being eyes on the street and, you know, just kind of engaging oftentimes with our local retailers. So that was a fun project uh, and uh, obviously will we'll be ongoing for a long time. Uh, so part of that work, and I said this at first, uh, is about public restrooms. And that's a big issue here in Portland, Maine. Tourist, tourism is uh, probably our major economic driver. Uh, and particularly in the summer, you know, in the time we're in now. Um, but what we've heard uh, is we do not have adequate public restroom facilities here. Now, that's something we're working on. Uh, so one of the ways we've done this is a partnership with a, some good friends at a group called the Portland Society for Architecture. They're a, a nonprofit here in uh, Portland, Maine, and uh, they are focused on a lot of things, including the built environment. And they wor worked with us to what we called a pea shed walk. So what that is, is we passed out a bunch of water to folks and we did a walk, a couple of different versions of that. That's one of them. And you can see there were three. And it was like, okay, you're going to need to hit the facilities. Where are we going to find them? Now we knew where they were, but this was sort of a, a community engagement, thoughtful process to where we thought they could be, where they should be and where they actually were. And then we also went into places and you know said hey can we use your restroom and you know documented that experience and you know some some successes and some challenges and we're very aware of sort of the privilege of a lot of folks that uh, you know if you're an expected mom for example and you ask someone if you can use their restroom at a retailer uh, or a small child or an older person uh you know your odds are probably higher than somebody who uh uh, maybe in a separate uh, or in a different state uh, in their in their life. Uh, so we're very conscientious about that and working to to uh, address that. We've added a couple of public restrooms in the last year, and we've got a lot more to go. And uh, it is a, a lot of uh, I've learned a lot. I never knew I knew that know that much about uh, uh, that issue. Uh, but man, I, I'm so much more informed and have a lot more work to do, but it, it, that was a fun part of it. And that's an important part to think about when we're talking about walkability, because, you know, there are people with medical issues, or maybe you just had uh, an, um, a, been at a restaurant for a while, 
one of the things here is we are I uh, craft beer like is huge here, huge. But you can't be a craft beer capital if you don't allow people to uh, have facilities for that, because ultimately you just rent it, you know. So you you got to pro provide the facilities. Uh, and again, we're a little bit into uh, uh, our work is a little bit into tourism as well. This is the one thing here, this visitor information center that we own and uh, uh, co-manage uh, it with uh, uh, Visit Portland and we provide visitor information in the summer. And this is just, again, on that spine as part of our, our public parks. This is one called Tommy's Park that, that along that Congress Street corridor that people walk to. Uh, so, but we know we're not, we're far from perfect. We have some gaps uh, that we need to, to, to do, continue to work on. One of them is a place called Lobsterman Park. I have a photo here we're in it, here in a minute, a place that's not really a park, but uh, it's the one I showed you that got yarn bomb that we uh, commonly referred to as Michael's Park. These are sort of spaces that need more activation. Uh, and it's important that we continue to and, and help other people remember that these are connected and not just singular or separate. Uh, we think it's important that, that things are, are part of that, and that's a philosophy we echo. Uh, and uh, things that you know constantly need maintenance uh, and, and and effort. That's it's never it's it's a little bit of job security, but it's something you know that we know the work is never done. And we've got this great street called Free Street that has a lot of opportunity for us here. It's kind of dead now, but it ends with the Portland Museum of Art, which is soon to undergo a I think it's like forty million dollar rehab. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of opportunity to manage that street for walk improved walkability during that period. Uh, and some of those businesses are going to be struggling as ten that uh, tends to happen during major construction. Uh, so we've got lots of opportunity there that hosts that street, in particular hosts two James Beard nominee restaurants. Uh, so it's a it is a popular destination, but it, we recognize it needs to not be those two little pockets. Uh, and again, that's that lobster and park area I mentioned. It's sort of, as you can see, a, a little barren and, and, and lots of opportunity there. Uh, this is another one called Lincoln Park. We also recognize we don't have enough green space in our downtown. This is one of the few places we do have it. So that's a project we're continuing to work on. Uh, fully aware of that. And again, that's an example of some of these restrooms that we were able to uh, advocate for. These are uh, called vaulted toilets. They're sort of, uh, they're a little more than, than temporary and not quite permanent because they can be moved uh, in about 24 hours, but they are also bolted down. They are um, composting, uh, but they also get cleaned daily, uh, vacuumed and sprayed down and all that sort of thing. But that continues to be obviously an issue that's eventually going to take, or already going to take more, more than that. So, so that's really kind of an overview of our approach and philosophy here in Portland, Maine. I appreciate your time and attention. I'm certainly happy to answer questions. And I'll just start by throwing one out, which is, you know, what's your community opportunity for, for uh, improved walkability uh, in that area? So um, love to hear your stories. Happy to answer questions. Uh, and thanks for your time and attention. Uh, what does downtown parking look like? Uh, how far are people having to walk to access areas? I see that, Jeremiah. Thank you. Uh, are there parking minimums? Um, happy to answer all those. Parking. Uh, sometimes I say parking, uh, pot, and pee, and poop are the only things I work with here in Portland. Uh, so, so you know, it's kind of a funny thing. Uh, you know, I should say cannabis is legal in the state of Maine, so it's 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 an also an interesting uh, 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 bit as well. So we have about fifteen thousand parking spaces uh, in the downtown improvement district, um, which is I, a lot. Uh, and post COVID, if we're ever post COVID, <laughs> parking is not the kind of issue that it used to be, but the perception of parking, it remains strong. And this is sort of an American or North American thing, I, you know, I think, which is if you can't park directly in front of a business for free, people are upset about it. Parking here is a, only about $2 an hour. Uh, it ends at 6 p.m. and it starts at 9 or 10 in the morning. So there's a huge gap when it's not 
uh, metered parking of any form. I, I think it's personally I think it's very underpriced. Um, there are quite a few parking garages in downtown, but and I, I toured a building. We've got some new construction happening, 18 stories here. I was on it the other day for just to give an example of this, and I could see five parking garages from where I was, all within the downtown. That the top floors were com um, completely empty and the bottom floors looked pretty empty. So the demand is low, but the perception is high, you know, particularly on like a Friday night or a Saturday afternoon. Um, so so uh, it, it is an, it is a constantly an issue. One of the things I would like to see uh, here in Portland is a circulator that's sort of a hop on, hop off for free. Uh, we do have a new uh, version of that, but it's uh, it's a park and ride. It will for free take you uh, from a parking deck here in downtown where the ferry terminal is all the way to a free park and ride, maybe a mile or so out of downtown. But once you you can hop on and hop off that, uh, but it's not as robust as I would like to see. So uh, uh, lots of parking, lots of perceived parking issues. So. I should say I was just with a, a person from Atlanta. I see you're from Atlanta. I went to the International Downtown Association's leadership event, and uh, uh, some of our, our your Atlanta or my Atlanta colleagues were there, and, and uh, they were really wonderful, a lot of fun. Uh, opposition to the design chosen for uh, not really. Uh, you know, there were some folks. Um, who, who thought it was sort of like, you know, uh, a little cheesy or whatever, but mostly it's been embraced. We do get a little bit of graffiti on these. Uh, and I, I will speak for myself and say, I don't mind good creative graffiti. What I get annoyed by is folks that, you know, have a Sharpie and write a few silly things. Uh, and I'm like, that's just the worst, laziest graffiti, <laughs> you know, do some, do some cool drawings and I, you know, I'll leave it alone. Uh, so, but mostly no, mostly folks have embraced it. A lot of it is very local stuff. So yeah, uh, in Australian plan. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree, agree with you there, Harrison, about the issues of urban renewal and, uh, you know, the, what is that, that old uh, Robert Mosick quote is like, uh, you hack your way through a city to, 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 you know, that's how you build through it and some you know yeah it's a, it's a tough it's a tough bet we still have urban renewal we're dealing with here uh we've got the scars of that uh, through a uh, 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 big interstate that runs you know ends and runs through downtown i'd love to see go away one day but yeah annika um <clears throat> i feel like this is kind of a quirky question i don't know if there's an answer but i i wonder i've lived in the other portland and I hope I would like to visit your Portland one day. I'm, I'm wondering if there is ever any confusion among the two Portlands. Do you get people who are maybe remotely in meetings who are confused about the two Portlands? Or is there also any kind of like, I know Portland, Oregon has that whole keep Portland weird. Is there is there a weirdness with the main Portland or anything? <laughs> Yeah, so we've started a new. It's fun. That's a your your question. The timing is good. We launched some new downtown banners not too long ago. They were designed by the main uh, College of Art and Design students. Actually, they're about three years behind because they were designed right as COVID was sort of taking off, and so the downtown banners got replaced by a lot of things that said, you know social distancing and masking, you know, you know, wash your hands, all that stuff. They stayed up until just a couple of months ago. Um, and one of them said uh, something along the lines of, we were here first, Portland, uh, you know, talking to the other port. It was meant as a sort of being sad, kind of like when you may have seen those memes that, you know, two stores across the street from each other, they go into those battle, uh, you know, where they put the words up. Uh, that was the intent of it. I will say we did definitely get some blowback on that. We took it down because we, you know, the intent was not to upset anybody. It was meant uh, tongue firmly planted in cheek. Who got uh, but, upset? You know, some folks from Portland, Oregon. Uh, and um, I got a, you know, only got like three emails in total for this. Um, one local, one from Portland, maybe only two. 
uh, one local and one from Portland, Oregon. And it was, uh, you know, somebody's like, that's not very kind of you or something. And, and it, was, it wasn't meant unkind. I lived in Seattle and my in-laws lived in Beaverton. So I've been a lot. I like Portland, Oregon a lot. Uh, so it was, it was meant tongue in cheek. Uh, but we do get that, which is why I like in, on this, uh, I put Portland, Maine on, on this. When I do things like this, I always say Maine, though our name is technically Portland downtown. Uh, I add Maine because people think I'm from Oregon if I don't. Uh, so so uh, it, it is kind of a funny thing. Uh, did Sunny work to encourage more downtown housing? Yes. Uh, thank you, Lovability. Yes, that's my favorite thing. Yeah, we're big fans and advocates of housing, and we're facing some really uh, serious housing issues here uh, in, in both in Maine and in greater Portland, and specifically in Portland. Uh, we uh, It's an interesting place to live because a local referenda are easy to get on the ballot. It only takes 1,500 signatures. There's no uh, accommodating for population growth or shrink uh, in or we've, we've grown. Uh, that's that's been that way for a long time, and it doesn't divide like uh, certain wards or anything. It's just fifteen hundred people. So we've had a lot of ballot initiatives in the last few years, as sort of the world has uh, had a little unrest and that sort of thing. One of them uh, was what they call the Portland Green New Deal, uh, and you know I'm not going to take a political stance on it one way or another, but it has. Uh, impacted how construction happens. And um, I will speak from my personal experiences. Sometimes folks, you know, when you change, they fear and, you know, it's easier down the road somewhere one way or the other because they don't have a hurdle or two, uh, even if those hurdles can be, uh, you know, leaped over. So it has impacted that. Uh, it, when you hit 10 units, you have to add some affordable housing. That's a good thing. I mean, but the problem is um, that both developers have been stopped at nine units. Uh, that's maxed out their development because the 10 units is when a variety of restrictions start, you know, restrictions, maybe not the best word, variety of uh, requirements start to kick in. So we've seen a lot of that sort of capping at nine units instead of you know, 10 or, you know, which would have, might have been 30 or 50 or whatever, but that they've just gone with 10. So we we're advocates for housing. That's part of the reason we're uh, in the in the residential engagement. We believe, you know, the more people living downtown, uh, you know, helps for all the things y'all know. And we, we're true advocates for that. One of our really great board members is building that 18 story property here in downtown, which comes with no parking which people, you know, are just, you know, some people are freaked out by, but they're filling that thing up really well because downtown is walkable. You can get groceries, you know, you can pretty much do anything. Uh, and then it has access to public transit and, and, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, we're big believers uh, in more and more downtown housing. We'd love to see some, um, we, we're also experiencing like probably a lot of you are, the workforce is shifting and it's a lot of work from home and that has an impact. And you know, some of our downtown buildings are not being utilized to their high, uh, one time highest and fullest. Converting those, uh, you know, a lot of them built in the 70s, a lot of them, you know, to re engineer that is really difficult. But I'm hoping that uh, some, some conversions, and we're already seeing one big uh, property getting converted to housing. So, more the better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Lot, lot going on. Well, I appreciate your time and attention, everyone. Happy to do the screenshot. Uh, if you come to Portland, Maine, let thank you very much. You know, let me know. I'd be happy to give you a tour. Uh, so look forward to it. Thanks. All right. Is that it, Annika? We need to. We take. You're on mute. So. Sorry, I mean, we can do it again. Yeah, if you guys want to hands in the hair, whatever you want to do, I'll do it now. Cheers. <laughs> Great. All right. Have a great Thank day. You. you too. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. Very good. Love it. Thank you so much. Y'all take care. This is great. It was a pleasure. <laughs>